Hi, I'm making this video because I heard there is a big unrest in Kerala state in India regarding the Sabara, Sabarimala temple. This is a temple dedicated to Lord Ayappa, a celibate deity, and the Supreme Court of Kerala state has decided it is unconstitutional for the temple to ban women and women have been trying to enter the temple and the opposition party, the BJP party, has been calling up protesters to defend the temple from what they call the atheists. The BJP party states that the Supreme Court, being a secular court, has no jurisdiction over temples. Um, the government is stating that the opposition party is creating social unrest and that equality um, yeah, must be respected and that religion is in a way no excuse for discrimination. This is a difficult case and um, to begin with I had to evaluate who has authority here. And it is true that the people and the society have chosen a government and the representatives of that government, the Supreme Court, have made a decision and this is the law of the land. But holy places are in a way not governed by that government. They are under direct control, direct influence of gods and goddesses, of higher beings. So, while Kerala state may be a democracy, any temple or any such place is basically a dictatorship with a god or a goddess deciding over this place, guiding the energies and making things happen or not happen. And human laws cannot force a deity to do something or not to do something. So in this case I would have to agree with the BJP that indeed the court has no jurisdiction. Then we come to the other point. Is it wrong to ban women from the temple? The argument has been made that Lord Ayapa is uh, celibate and for centuries women of menstruating age have been banned from the temple. But it is not up to tradition to decide. It is not up to people to decide neither the women nor the devotees. It is up to the Lord himself to decide how he wants to run his temple. And this is why I prayed to Lord Ayapa to find out what his position is on the current predicament. And Lord Ayapa is indeed a very celibate deity, a very chaste figure. So purity is at the essence the essence of his blessings, the essence of uh, the devotees and it is also a, therefore a requirement to have that purity to be able to receive the blessings and to be able to contact Lord Ayapa in his temple and if indeed men and women would mix there that purity would be lost because men are very reactive to women's energies and women are very reactive to men's energy unless they are enlightened of course but most people are not so mixing indeed men and women is a bad idea also the Indian tradition of banning women of uh, who are at that moment menstruating is indeed seen as a correct tradition by Lord Ayapa because just as a man may lose his purity, lose his focus by the influence of a woman or having had recently sexual activity which also creates a turbulence in the energy body or eating for instance meat or other energies with a much lower vibration also disturb their purity. So anything which disturbs purity is basically to be banned. And it doesn't matter whether it is eating meat or having had sex or even having had impure thoughts. But the ban which Lord Ayapa 
is placing upon his devotees is not a sexual ban. He is not opposed to women coming to the temple. He is not opposed to hearing their prayers or giving his blessings to women, even to women who are of menstruating age. But he feels that for people to come who are not pure is in a way disturbing the pure ones who are at his temple and in a way creating a lot of yeah indeed uh, defilement of the holy place so the idea of uh, mixed groups is absolutely out of the question but Lord Ayapa would like to have groups of men and women separately then of course there's the question what to do with homosexual people and bisexual people because a homosexual male may be aroused or a homosexual female may be aroused by beings of the same sex being present. And also here in Lord Ayapa uh, feels that such people should not mingle into this crowd because even though that most people in the crowd would not be upset by having another man there or having another woman there. This person's own energy will be upset and therefore they are detracting from the energy of the temple and making the prayers and the ceremonies more difficult for the others who seek the blessing. So even though I am personally very much a champion of equality and equanimity and I would like to have equal rights for men, women, heterosexual, homosexual, bisexual. Um, it is not always practical in a spiritual place like a temple to have such a thing. And in this case the deity itself is not exclusive. It is not exclusive towards men or women or homosexuality or heterosexuality or bisexuality at all. Is mainly concerned with purity, that the people who seek his blessings are on a path to purity, seeking purity, and that purity is indeed what they come there to receive. He does not like it that his temple has become a pawn in a political game. He does not like it that there is now war in the streets. Because his purpose is harmony, is purity, is peace, is enlightenment. Not tradition, not racism, not sexism, not discrimination, but rather common sense in what is the best path to purity and how each and every person can add to that purity in their visits to the temple. He and I both hope that people can learn to cooperate and share the blessings he is offering to this world.